What up, everybody? What up, everybody? Let me get to the spot. Let me get to the spot. Oh, hello, everybody. This is Plan Your Greatness, and I am your gracious host, Carlton Hamilton. Let's get right at it. Believer's Dilemma. Now, if you've been watching some of my other videos, you, you saw that I did a series uh, based on the book. Shameless plug. Here it is. Plan Your Greatness. Life, Love, and Business After Sports and Basketball by yours truly. Look for this sometime soon. This book's going to be published. All right. Now, in that, in that other video, I broke down the 13 chapters in the book. Chapter 13 specifically talked about the four belief systems or the four believers. These are just, I'm not some theologist. I'm not being highly religious, but it was just something over time that I've come across and said, I believe these are the four believers or the four belief systems that people have. Quickly, they are, one is non-believers. Then there is the do nothing believers. There is the limited believer. And then there's the unlimited believers. Now, I'm not going to go into big details. You just kind of figure out what that's talking about. If you want to, you can find chapter 13. You'll find it, what it'll say, plan your greatness. Um, and then it'll say chapter 13, and then it'll talk about the four belief systems. All right. You can go look at that and it'll break that down. But what I want to do is I want to go forward because it doesn't matter because I said, this is the, what I call the believer's dilemma. Cause I, I've, I've come to understand that it really doesn't matter whatever one of those that you believe, whether you're a non-believer, a do nothing believer, a limited believer or an unlimited believer. If you strip all that away, what's left? You. So it comes down to you and your and the belief in yourself and the action that follows behind that. OK, so. More, more, and more, as I've done more research over time, I've, I've, I've come to this understanding. Well, I, I had to get some some help from Miriam's dic dictionary. All right. Miriam's dictionary. And, and let us not debate of what said this and this dictionary that just follow me on this. Just just general definitions of these words. It says that God is the creator and ruler of the universe and, and the spiritual uh, supreme authority and the moral compass of of society, of the world. All right. That's what it says in some general terms. All right. It, it, it says that an atheist is a person or people that lack a belief in the existence of God or gods. Let's keep it real simple. Okay. An agnostic, they've attached it to where they said a person or group of people who claim neither faith nor disbelief in God. And then it also goes further to say agnostic means a non-committal attitude towards something. And that's what I like because people, I'm not saying I, I, I believe I'm an agnostic. What I'm saying is that we attach these social definitions to words because every time you hear the word agnostic, immediately you think of a belief in God. But really what it means is a non-committal commitment, a non-committal attitude towards something. Just means that they, they don't go either way. They're really, probably a lot of them are scientists. They said, well, I need some, some evidence, you know, either one way or the other. That's fine. So I looked up the word gnostic. Okay, the root of agnostic. And it says relating to knowledge or like what we know. So now the word agnostic should make a little bit more sense where there's things we know that things we don't know. And so a person who's an agnostic just says, hey, there's a lot of things I know. There's a lot of things that I don't know. So I can't just jump either way. I'm I'm in agreement with them as just far as always seeking and looking for, you know, other things now. Again, you strip all that away or you take any position. God, you believe in God. You're an atheist. You're an agnostic. You strip all that away or you take a position. You know what is, you know what's left or what it comes down to? You. All right? You and your human action, whether it's trial and error or you're actually seeking out people to get advice, it comes down to your you know, your, your human action. Now, here's what's interesting about that. It doesn't matter what position you take. Non-believer, do-nothing believer, limited believer, unlimited believer. Whether you believe in God, 
or you're an atheist or an agnostic. There's a, the similar process comes down to the end. Thought, whether you believe that thought is coming from some higher power out there in the collective universe or you believe it is created by yourself, a thought must begin. From that thought comes an emotion. That emotion creates a feeling. That feeling creates behavior. That behavior creates an action and that action creates an experience. And if you are seeing the same things, it's because you're having those same thoughts and it's going that same cycle. Now, if you want something new to be produced out of that, you must bring in some new thought. Now, as I say that again, human action produces results. So once again, it doesn't matter where you are in that belief system, where you are as far as believing in God, not believing in God, or here, or it's like this, whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God and you believe in something else, the sun, the moon, the money, a tree, okay? You put it in something else or you believe in absolutely nothing or you say, you know what? I, I don't know. Just You just avoid the, I don't know. Or you say, you know what? I'm not quite sure. Doesn't matter whatever position you take. Here's what's happening. All those belief systems require action. After you declare or we declare our position, even if we take a position we believe is a non-position, it still comes down to us, uh, our action. Now, something I, it, as I was putting this together, it, it reminded me, I remember when I was in, in prison, the last yard that I was on, because the first yard that I went to was so far off the beaten path. I mean, it was literally in the middle of Arizona, out in the middle of nowhere. So you stood out there in the yard, you saw nothing but the sun or the moon or whatever. And I sometimes I would walk out at night or whatever, and I would just kind of marvel at just seeing that. And sometimes it was just super duper quiet. And that was really, really super impressive because we were so out in the middle of nowhere, there was no noise. But then there were other times where the noise was broken by the shot. Yes, the guards shooting off in the shooting range. So that's what I heard a lot. But now the last shot that I was on was way out, out in the middle of nowhere, but it was out on the far western suburbs of, of Phoenix. But it was close to the freeway. It was close to the 10 freeway, which comes from Phoenix, heads out toward LA. So from the yard, you could see off in the distance, cars going back and forth. And so I used to stand in a very familiar spot in the yard, hands like, hands like this, or hands down to my side, or hands in my pocket. Most of the time, my hands were just right in front of me. And I would just be staring out at cars that were driving by. And every now and then, somebody would come up to me and because they would see me just in this, this almost this standing meditative state. And they would say, what, what, are you, what are you looking at? What are you thinking about? And I would always say the same thing. I said, I'm imagining myself in one of those vehicles driving away from here and beginning my life again. And every inmate, it ended the conversation. They would literally just, just kind of walk off. And I understood why they walked off because I understand now why they walked off. Because when you get in that system, you're, you, you can become so institutionalized that you stop dreaming. And you stop using your ability to take your mind out of that environment. Now, I can articulate it now, but I was doing something before I read any of those books, before I read Think and Grow Rich, The Laws of Success, um, uh, As a Man Thinketh, The Power of Positive Thinking, The Power of the Subconscious Mind, you name it. I read all those books before I read those books, uh, Man Search for Meaning. I, before I read those books, I had fought so much in my mind against being in prison that I always tried to envision myself out there. And so as I got to the very end, it became stronger and stronger that I understood 
that I didn't have to be in prison mentally. I knew I, I, I had no control. I had made my bed to be there physically, but I knew, I said, I don't have to, to be here mentally. So I told myself, I'm gonna spend as little time mentally in this facility as possible, and that's what I did. Now, that brings me to like real life now, because what I see is that I made a mistake that took me physically out of society to now every day or 20 for 21 and a half hours out of every day, I was in an eight by 10 by 12 foot box sharing it with somebody else for 22 and a half hours of the day. So every moment that I could, every free moment that I wasn't doing something else, I would literally try to meditate and take myself out of the environment that I, that I was in. I had physically imposed upon myself that this was going to be my environment, but I said, I'm not going to stay here mentally. Now I bring that to point because what happens is there are people in real life that are going through some real difficult situations, but they forget that they're free, that they have freedom to move around, to reach out to other people, to reach out to resources. And so what they do is they impose prison on themselves. They put physical restrictions and mental restrictions on themselves that they don't have to. So as much as I fought in there because I was physically restrained, we have people that put restrictions on themselves and then what they do to cope with that is they'll go use, they'll try to medicate themselves with drugs, they'll try to medicate themselves with drinking, they'll try to medicate themselves through, through promiscuous sex, or they'll try to medicate themselves through technology, which means surfing the internet to try to temporarily you know, feel better. And it doesn't work. Okay, so believer's dilemma. Bottom line is it does not matter what position you take in your belief system because the bottom line is it comes down to you taking action. All right. This is plan your greatness. And I will say this again, plan your greatness. You know why? Because no one else will. All right. I will see you all next time.